Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 69-72 Carryover League. We are today in the American League Midwest in a Game 7. Uh, in a in a very highly competitive, hard, difficult played series. I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily calling it a thrilling series. I would just call it two teams really beating each other up, though neither really shows long-term potential other than some gut and grit with lesser quality rosters than most of the teams. Um, let's start first by looking at the situation going into the series in a seven game elimination in this division. Uh, the White Sox bring a plus one tiebreaker advantage into the series with Milwaukee having home field for games one, two, six, and seven. But the White Sox are also a game and a half back. What does that mean? It means that if they win four games to three, uh, Milwaukee would still have a half game lead, but the White Sox would have a plus two head to head. And you can't knock a team out by a half game unless you also have the tiebreaker. So a game eight would have to be played, meaning that these White Sox would have to win five out of eight games. And what has gone on? It's a long story, folks. But starting in game one, you have Wilbur Wood versus Marty Patton. And Wilbur Wood beats Marty Patton two to one. Long story to tell, let's just keep going. Game two in Milwaukee, trying to even it up. But no, it is Tom Bradley, the nice number two starter against Bill Parsons. It's, um, it's a 6-2 game. Parsons gives up the long balls in the sixth inning. And the White Sox take two games in Milwaukee, and now you're starting to think that, yeah, the White Sox can pull this thing off. They can win five out of eight. That's looking pretty good. We go to Chicago. The home Comiskey Park fans are going nuts, but it's not helping. Number three starter Jerry Royce has had a quietly nice year for Milwaukee. And Paul Edmondson for the White Sox has had a really bad year. And it's the Brewers coming back down 0-2 and winning game three on the road, 6-2. Road team has won every game. That shows grit, determination, and all that sort of sort of wonderful stuff. What happens in game four? Well, number four starters, Gene Braybender against Stan Bonson. White Sox have the advantage here to go up three games to one, but they cannot execute too many long balls. And now we start to see the difference of the two teams late in the game. White Sox have a bullpen by committee, and Milwaukee has stud closer Ken Sanders. That is the advantage to turn the tide in this series, as the White Sox bullpen gives up the uh, run in the eighth, and Ken Sanders slams the door in the ninth. So now we're even, we're right back where we started from after playing four games. No movement in the overall standings. But give the Chicago White Sox the props. They come back in game five. With Wilbur Wood, they seem to play differently when he's on the mound. A 3-0 shutout for Wilbur Wood. He's got 10 complete games and a 7-4 record thus, thus uh, far. So he leads the league in innings pitch in complete games. So we're back to the White Sox just being a half game back with three games left. It's a simple two out of three. With games six and seven in Milwaukee, if there's a game eight... It would be in Chicago because they have the head-to-head -head advantage. So the White Sox are hoping, man, can we just win one of these next two to get game eight, the tie-breaking game in Chicago with Wilbur Wood? Let's see what happened in game six. Game six. Uh, it's Bill Parsons and Tom Bradley again, and this time Parsons delivers. It's a real nail-biter here. Two runs early. But actually, Tom Bradley battled back in this thing. It could have been a lot worse. The White Sox scrapped with some errors in the seventh and a bunt and a whatever. They get it, make it a 2-1 game. But what I said was a difference between the two teams. Ken Sanders slams the door in the ninth. And we're right back where we started from again, folks. Six baseball games. No traction in the standings. It's game seven in Milwaukee. Uh, the White Sox need to win the next two games. 
one on the road, one at home. And the matchup's not looking good because the matchup, we're back to Paul Edmondson struggling for the White Sox against Jerry Royce for the Brewers, who has pitched pretty well this year. And the White Sox have to win this on the road now. So they are on high alert. They juggle their lineup a little bit. Let's get started from Milwaukee County Stadium. Highly entertaining series. Never say die in this division. I want to take a peek at the overall division standings again. This is not the best division, but when you look at the level of competition between the teams, here we are. This is really competitive. The Twins in first, 19 and 14. Royals 1916. You see how close this all is, all bunched up together like that. I mean, of course, the American League East and the National League West have, you know, three better teams in it, but the last place teams aren't necessarily as competitive. You get the idea. All right, let's get started. Louis Aparicio leads off for the White Sox, two five. Let's take a look at Louis's card because he is their All Star. Louis Aparicio, his 1970 card, he hit 313 at shortstop. He went to the All-Star game this year. He leads the game off with a double. Walt Williams, 34, lines a second. Oh, excuse me, Dwayne Joseph, I should say. Yeah. About a second, I'm sorry, I messed that up. Oh, hang on one second. We got to, I didn't reset the lineups, so there we go. Walt Williams did that second. My mistake. He turned his lineup card in, but the commissioner forgot to uh, punch in the correct order. So, never mind. Yeah, Walt Williams did bat second in line out. So, it's Dwayne Josephson batting third. 2-5, grounds ashore. I wanted to make sure I got that right in such a critical game. And batting fourth will be Carlos May. 63, pitcher X. He's an E-11 pitcher. And just like that, Jerry Royce gets out of it. Bottom of the first, Tommy Harper. He was an all-star for the Brewers this year. Strikes out. Mike Hegan, 112. Lines out. Jim Fregosi, 55. Bounces to second. Good start for Edmondson for once. Orlando Cepeda, 412. Right. Bill Melton, bouncer to short. Both shortstops are pretty good. 2E21s and 2E22s. Fregosi makes the play. Jim Paglieroni pops the second. Bottom the second, Don Mincher, 210. This guy's the center. Jerry McNertney, 45, bouncer to short. 2E21 makes the play. John Briggs, 38, is a K. Top of three, in County Stadium, Jim LaFay, 411, bounce to first. Don Young, this guy's the center. And Aparicio, 18. Bounce the third. Wayne Comer, 6'10. Catcher's card. He's a 3 5. There's an out. Steve Hubley, 49 off Edmondson. Homer won a 10 double, but he doesn't have power, so it's only a single. There's a break. The, Bre the Brewers want to be more aggressive stealing bases. The bottom three hitters, Comer, Hubley, and Thebald, are all B stealers. So when they're not hitting and running, they like to try stealing because Joseph's got a plus two arm. He's gonna flat out steal here, but no hit and run. The steal is a 15, so he's throwing out stealing. Plus two arm gets him. There you go. So with two outs, it's the ball. 33, pops the second. We've got a nice one here. Top of four, Walt Williams. Three, six, this guy's a left. Dwayne Josephson, 65, bounce to second. Carlos May, 58, base hit. And Orlando Cepeda, 3-6 is a walk with two on and two outs. It's Bill Melton. Let's take a look at Bill Melton's card before he hits here. Uh, this is his 1970 card with 33 home runs and a 263 batting average. Don't quite understand the 4E37 defense at third base for a regular. He must have really... <laughs> Needed to get that glove restrung or something. Anyway, two on, two outs. The pitch to Bill Melton. 5-10 off the Jerry Royce card. Homer 1-11. Doesn't get it, but he gets the double. 
Cepeda has surprising wheels. He's a 13 runner. 14, 15. Hubley in center. Minus one arm, I believe. Correct. So it's the 14 that he can run with. This is a big run here. Cepeda rounding third. The play at the plate. He scores on an 11. So the, the running of Cepeda gives the Chai Sox an extra run. A 2 nothing lead for Edmondson. I don't think he's had a lead in, in a game much this year. Jim Pagliaroni, 312, flies to left. 2 nothing Chai Sox. Tommy Harper, 110, is going base with a base hit. Now, the down two runs, I don't know if you're going to be so run happy, particularly with Mike Hegan up. Mike Hegan, 1-9 is a K. For Gosey, 38 to walk. That's why you don't steal, because these guys walk. So you have two on, one out. Don, Dangerous Don Mincher, 66 is a K. And two outs, McNertney, 2-4, bounce to third. Edmondson, this is a four shutout inning. This is one of his better starts. Jim LaFay, 2-5, bounce to third. Don Young, 59, triple one to five, single. Triple off of Royce's card. I haven't seen Royce get knocked around like this much. They're going to bring the infield up with the A-bunning Aparicio. 3-6, you saw Louie's card earlier. Homer, 1-8, surprising amount of power for the guy who hit just five homers. Homer, 1-8, to eight, double. Rolls a 20, gets the double. We have a 3-0 game. There's action in the Milwaukee bullpen. Runner at second, one out, Walt Williams. 4-4, four, four, third X. Well, neither, neither team, both the fielding on these teams is not very good. Tommy Harper's a 4-31 at third base. And he boots that ball. Runners on the corners. Josephson, they're going to bring the infield up because they're down three. They don't want another easy run to score. 5 10. Josephson, he's got power. You saw uh, the same thing. Homer 1 to 11, the same thing that uh, Melton did and missed. But Homer 1 to 11 is a double again. So Williams has some speed. It's a 15. There's just one out. It's a 14, so he's running anyway. And he scores from first on the double. Jerry Roy is getting shaken up here in the fifth of a 5 0 game with a runner at second and one out. Carlos May, 38 to walk. How far do you go with this? Uh, the Brewers do have one, a little bit of cushion. You know, they don't, this isn't an elimination game for them. So that's part of the thinking, I guess. First and second for Cepeda with one out. 68 is a single to left field. Josephson. 11 runner. Briggs is a plus two arm, but it makes it a 13. He can't run with a 13. Two outs he might have. And then we have Melton. Runners on the corners. We're gonna play back, look for a double play here in a five nothing game. Bill Melton, 5'11 is pitcher X. This could be that double play. He's a 2E11 pitcher, and that's a double play right there off the E31. The way you score this is when you see a parenthesis show up in the result, it means that result was dictated by the E rating. The E rating is 31. So an E31 pitcher made a double play ball, and Jerry Royce is an E11 pitcher. So the technology is if the better fielder, if the bad, if the worst fielding rating makes the double play, the better fielding rating would also make the double play. So it saves me, it speeds the game up by not wasting time by putting in extra information there. So it is a, the 163 double play for Melton. The inning ends, but it's 5 nothing. Edmondson's been given the best cushion all year. John Briggs, 57, sky's the center. Wayne Comer, 2-3, bounce to short. Steve Hubley, 2-8, single. Ron Theobald, 4-4, four, four, short X. Aparicio, he's a 2-21, 21, makes the play. We go to the sixth. Brewers don't want to Got their bullpen here. They'll let Royce, and you got the bottom of the lineup. They'll let Royce pitch into the sixth at least. Again, the Brewers have a little bit of cushion. So Jim Pagliaroni, 1 6 is a walk. Jim LaFay, 4 4, third X. But it's Tommy Harper, a 4 E31. E31, single dot dot. Yeah, these teams have a tendency to just fall apart at various times. Runners with the corners. The infield is up for Don Young because he's an A-bunner. 3-6, the center be question mark. 
We could run PAGs if he's fast enough, but he's not. He's a slow runner. So it's too shallow. And there's one out. They keep the infield up for the A bunning Aparicio. By the way, Jerry Royce is a starter seven, so that's why he's not broken and still in the game. Aparicio, 66, is that sack fly to left field. Now I'll run it first and two outs for Walt Williams. 38, bounce it a short. Bottom of the sixth, six nothing White Sox. Chance to win four of seven games to prolong the, the tension here in this division. Tommy Harper, 47 is a K. Mike Hegan, 42, rolls the pitcher. Jim Fregosi, 47, a swing and a miss, strike three. Paul Edmondson's best start of the year at not a better time with the White Sox season on the brink. He delivers his best start. Six nothing in the seventh. Jerry Royce will be leave the game, but while the pitcher makes his new pitcher makes his way to the mound, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. So in the top of the seventh, John Gellner will come out of the Brewer pen. Gellner was a Seattle pilot in 69, was pretty good with 330 ERA. He went to Milwaukee when the team moved. Six nothing game, top of seventh inning. Dwayne Josephson, 111, bounce to second. Carlos May, 35 is a walk. Orlando Cepeda, 110 is a double to right field. Carlos May is a 12 runner, will not run. Second and third, they got to bring it up for Melton. 45 pops to third, and with two outs, Pagliaroni, is he has power, he'll bat. 68, skies the right field. All right, the White Sox are going to make some defensive substitutions. Bobby Newell will come in for Pagliaroni to play second base. Lafay will play third base for Melton. Melton goes to designated hitter. We can also bring in a new left fielder for Carlos May, and that'll be Russ Snyder. All right, six nothing game. Edmondson. Still in there. Stretch time, though. Uh, we are listening to this really long compilation by Big Star, Keep an Eye on the Sky. About five hours of music by Big Star, and we are 27 cuts into it. A lot of demos, obviously. Extra takes. You get the idea. Bottom of seven. Edmondson, he's a starter seven. If he puts three guys on, we'll definitely hook him here. Mincher. 510, short X, Apricio, 2B21, pitch, you gotta want, cut him out. Jerry McNertney, 34, pitcher. John Briggs, 65, lines are short. Milwaukee has definitely got a better offense, and this is this is Wilbur Wood like. <laughs> uh, the best performance by somebody not named Wilbur Wood on the Chai Sox. Seven shutout innings, and only three batters over the minimum. Top of the eighth, Gellner still in there against Jim LaFay. 2-5, bounce it short. Don Young, 1-2, fouls the catcher. And Aparicio, 59, sky's the center. Bottom of the eighth, Wayne Comer. Brewers have to pack their bags and fly to Chicago. It's not a, night, not a pretty sight. 6-6, six, six, Wayne Comer, second X. This is Bobby Noop, a 2 11 He's out. Steve Hubley, 2-10 single. Ron Thebald, 63, pitcher B. And with two outs, Tommy Harper, 55, second C. Paul Edmondson, the game of his life. We know a little bit about Paul Edmondson, unfortunately. Uh, he passed away in a traffic accident before the 1970 season as he was counted on to be a young star in the White Sox organization and their pitching staff. And sadly, he died before spring training of 1970. So it's good to see, and what could very well be the final start of his life, <laughs> uh, throwing a shutout. Six-nothing shutout for Paul Edmondson. 
We go to the ninth inning, and the Brewers will send John O'Donnell. Uh, they'll send uh, Earl Stevenson out there in the ninth. It'll be Walt Williams, 64, bouncer to third. Tommy Harper, 4031, makes the play though. Josephson, 17, double one nine, double. Russ Snyder in for Carlos May. 510 is catcher's card. This is McNerton. He's a two. Whoops. There. Pass ball. Murray goes a third with two outs. And, our, and it's Cepeda. Snyder with the pass ball. And Orlando Cepeda. 610 off Stevenson. Center X. Hubley is a 44 in center field. 44 in center field. And he makes the catch. Nice catch there. 6 nothing. bottom of the ninth. All the defense the Chai Sox can muster to support Paul Edmondson. Mike Egan leads off. 47 is a K. Jim Fregosi, 38 walk. Don Mincher, 37 walk. Okay, Jerry McNerney, 2 on, 1 out. 65 pops to short with 2 outs. It's John Briggs, dangerous hitter. Let's take a look at John Briggs. We haven't seen a lot of cards. Dangerous hitter. But our guy's going for a CGSO here in the most meaningful game of the White Sox season to this point. So the pitch to John Briggs. 68. Single one to 17 is the single. Loading the bases with two outs. Breaking Edmondson. I know it's a six-run lead. And I'd love to see this guy get a complete game shutout broken. So he will pitch to Wayne Comer. With the bases loaded and two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning, broken. He's probably thrown 142 pitches at this point. Paul Edmondson, the pitch to Wayne Comer. Let's take a look at Wayne Comer's card. Plenty of on bases with walks for Wayne. The pitch to Wayne Comer, 53. Skies it in a right field. Unfortunately, the worst fielder on the team is Walt Williams, who's a 42. But he makes the catch! And look at that. That was already set up. Right field 4E2. It's exactly what Walt Williams' defense is. And it's a fly to right field off the E rating. You see the parenthesis there? And he's, a, he's got an outstanding E rating of E2. And that's what made the play happen. And he gets the CGSO. Paul Edmondson. The story of Paul Edmondson is a fantastic finish. And a sad, but sad, tragic uplifting finish how about that paul edmondson uh you can google the name and find out what happened to him it's a it's a real tragedy but anyway the white Sox then have won four of seven games and find themselves a half game behind the brewers and they'll get to play a tie-breaking game at home in comiskey park and the reason the game is in comiskey is because the white Sox have beaten the brewers both times they've played them in best of seven series, four games to three each time. So they're plus two overall. So the 15th game the teams will play will be in Comiskey Park. How about that? Earl Stevenson gives up a hit in the ninth. Gellner was okay, a hit and a walk. And Jerry Royce, is, um, he'd been overachieving to this point, but he struggled today. Eight hits and six runs. He had the big error in that uh, fifth inning that really messed up his day. We're, on, we're gonna, only going to charge him for three earned runs, actually. It'll help his ERA a little bit. Three walks. He didn't strike anybody out today. And the White Sox as a team did not strike out today. Paul Edmondson's line on a complete game shutout. Five hitter. Three walks. Seven strikeouts. Gets a complete game. In Milwaukee. 109 109 6-10-05. 4-0-3-7. That is game seven. Obviously, I'll be playing a thrilling game eight. It'll be Wilbur Wood, Marty Patton, third matchup in Comiskey Park. I will report the results of that at the end of this video to let you know which team advances. Let's look at the stats and the standings in the, one of the most competitive divisions in baseball. Seven games. The White Sox are eight and six against Milwaukee this year.
So when we looked at the year to date stats, the Brewers are 16 and 15, with eight of those 15 losses being to the hands of the White Sox. They're hitting 250 with a very outstanding 317 ERA. And men I mentioned Jerry Royce. Uh, this is not height of his powers, Jerry Royce. This is a very young one. He hadn't quite figured it out yet. But year to date, even after giving up uh, all those runs in the game you saw, he's only given up 14 runs in 41 innings. That translates to a 307 ERA and a 4 1 record. And the White Sox, they're 18 and 18, just a half game behind. They're hitting 229 as a team with a 370 ERA. Wilbur Wood has 10 complete games and 104 innings. But let me go to Paul Edmondson for a moment. With that complete game shutout, he improved the record to 2 and 6. So he got a second win in a bad year. He had given up 37 runs and 45 innings. And you see that's not very good either. His ERA after the shutout is 740, which is really sh a shame because this is an outstanding Stratomatic card. His actual stats in 1969 he was, well, oddly enough, the, the one loss record, he was one in six. And here he's two and six. So he's one in six with a 368 ERA in 88 innings. So we've, he's thrown 48 innings and 45 innings in my league. And, uh, his ERA has not nearly been that good. But even better, let's look at the overall standings now in the Central. Here it is. It is crazy. So the Twins at 19 to 14, the Royals 19 and 16. Uh, interesting thing for the Royals, they will stay in second place as the Brewer White Sox winner can only get into third place. But uh, just two and a half games between the last place White Sox and the first place Twins. That's it today. I'll report back the result of games eight at the end of the video. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time. Well, folks, it is all over in Comiskey Park. Probably the most competitive series for the length, at least, I've ever played with two fighting like crazy teams. In the White Sox outlast the Brewers two to one, and it's Wilbur Wood won three of uh, the five wins the White Sox needed. Three of the eight games he pitched, of course, uh, three times in eight days. As did tough luck loser Marty Patton, who pitched brilliantly as well. He just was a whisker behind Wilbur Wood. It's a two-one final. Walt Williams, a two-out, two-run homer in the fifth. The Brewers rallied in the eighth. Uh, a two-out double by Ted Savage scores for Gosey from first, who was running and scored. A walk to McNertney, but Wilbur Wood punches out Jerry May with two outs. And in the ninth inning, the Brewers get the tie run at first with two outs, and it's Wilbur Wood against all-star Tommy Harper. He strikes him out. Great series. I don't know how far the White Sox will continue after this. But the Brewers and White Sox really showed, they were so bad, both of these teams were last year. They've showed so much improvement. It really makes for an exciting future for both teams in this wide open, suddenly wide open division that I, that I was just re ready to hand it to the Twins and Royals to. Amazingly. And then when you look back up to the uh, elimination, so I plugged in the results here. The White Sox needed a five and three, and it's exactly what they delivered a five and three. So that means they have a 19 and 18 record. The Brewers are eliminated with a 16 and 16 record. And when we go into the next round, you'll see this is pretty interesting. I'll give you this information now. The second place Royals will play the third place New York Yankees in a five game elimination. Only a half game separates them, so that's a simple best of five. In the case of the White Sox, they have the unfortunate task of going to Baltimore and face the world champion Baltimore Orioles. They are uh, three, game, three total games behind. So again, the White Sox, this time a 5-3 is not the formula. The formula is they have to beat the Orioles four out of five. Doing that, they'd be tied with the Orioles, but of course they would win head-to-head.
It's not out of the question, extremely unlikely chance of that, but break up the White Sox, break up the Brewers. It was a great series. Uh, again, it was the road team won the first four games of this series, and, it, and yet it still went eight. White Sox and Brewers, great baseball. Thanks for checking it all out.